Hello everyone. Today we're going to be solving a paper uh, taken from the year 2018, 2018, and the month May June, and we're going to be solving our MCQ paper, and the variant is 23. So let's get started. The first sum says, or rather the question says, in an experiment, an object is heated. The data from the experiment is shown. The energy transfer to the object is three kilojoules. The mass of the object is 2 kgs and the rise in temperature of the object is 10 degrees Celsius. And it also says that the specific heat capacity of the object is 150 joules per kg degree Celsius. And it asks us, what is the thermal capacity of the object? Well, they've actually thrown in a bit of extra information here and you'll see why exactly you see exactly why in a second, right? So the specific heat capacity of an object, the specific, so I'll just write specific here, um, the, the specific heat capacity of the object is, um, is a measure of how much energy it takes uh, to, to make an object of, uh, to make a one kg object, or rather object of unit mass, increase its temperature by one uh, degree Celsius. But the thermal capacity of the object, and this is the official definition, the thermal capacity of the object is the amount of energy it takes to raise the temperature of the object without factoring the mass in the equation. So it's just a measure of how much energy it takes to raise the, 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 the temperature of an object and that's it. That's a measure of uh, thermal capacity. And in fact, there is a formula here. And uh, I'll explain. I'll, I'll rather I'll write down the formula uh, in a second. Okay. So the formula um, is that the thermal capacity um, of an object is equal to the specific heat capacity of the object C into the mass of the object. So the thermal capacity thermal capacity of the object is the, the the specific heat capacity into its mass and if you want to uh, if you want to remember this formula because it's kind of obscure you can think of it like this the specific heat capacity is joules the unit of it is joules upon uh, kg degree celsius and if you multiply that by mass which is uh, kgs you can uh, cancel out the, the kgs in the denominator to give you joules per degree Celsius, right? So obviously don't go with this logic. I mean, you shouldn't use this logic. Um, you should understand the concept behind thermal capacity. It's a very simple definition. But uh, it just helps you remember the formula. And the formula uh, basically... You know, in, to, to use the formula correctly, you just multiply the specific heat capacity of the object with the, the mass of the object. And uh, we can calculate that in a moment. And uh, so we'll just multiply the specific heat capacity. That's 150 uh, joules per kg degree Celsius. And the mass, which is two, 2 kgs, which gives us... Excuse me. Sorry, I just... Uh, yeah, okay. Which gives us 300 joules per degree celsius so d is our answer Move right, so this is the last sum and it says that a graph here shows the count rate registered by a counter near to a sample of radioactive uh, isotope and it says that um, they measure the change over a period of a few days and it also says that the background count rate is five counts per minute now you could you could possibly um, make a very grave mistake here by not factoring the background rate, and I'll explain why in a second. You see, the the the, the half life of a substance is the amount of time. So the amount of time it takes for um, uh, for um, let in this case the count rate to decrease by half. Right, so if the count rate is initially x, uh, the half life is just a measure of how much time it takes to go from x to x half. All right, x by two. Now, what you could and you 
uh, this this you could pro possibly um, you know make this mistake here. So let's zoom in. You could possibly uh, sorry zoomed in too much. Okay, you could possibly make this mistake. You could possibly mistake make the mistake of just taking this value of forty five counts uh, per minute and having it to get twenty two point five. And then just comparing that value, 22.5 is roughly here, and saying, okay, that's that amounts to 2.5, 2.5 is the answer. But that's wrong. And that's because the background count rate is sort of contaminating the, the readings, right? It's like it's it's providing a source of error. If you have a, if you have the sample right here, let's just show some, you know, let's just show the sample emitting radiation. The 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 count rate uh, detectors here. Um, let's just say a Geiger counter and it's sort of uh, emitting radiation the value that the Geiger counter registers or the counter registers is 45 because you also have some extra radiation sneaking in you know it's sort of coming around from the air from the rocks it's just uh, it's just um, fluctuations in background radiation it's just background radiation from the environment interfering with the results so 45 is act 45 counts per minute is actually is not actually the the real um uh the real amount of you know the real rate of decay of that substance it's going to be um the 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 measured value 45 minus the you know the the contamination from the background uh, radiation from background radiation and so the true rate of decay of uh, or rather true rate of emission of radiation of this of the sample is uh, 40 counts per minute and so now we have to just say okay how much time does it take for uh, for the the count rate per minute to go from 40 counts per minute to 20 counts per minute just just applying that same logic applying this same uh, logic all right you could say um, well, that would be, okay, well, that would be 20, we could just uh, draw a line to here, and, uh, you know, compare it down here, and say, aha, 3 is the answer, but again, you would be wrong, because this graph right here, this graph which is plotted, is the contaminated graph, it's the, gra the, the raw readings that the, the counter or uh, the detector is uh, put plotting, right, because there's still background radiation all throughout these readings, and um, so uh, this is a, a very important step right here what you have to do what you you have to do this you have to add the background rate back to the what the predicted half-life would be what the actual half-life would be and that's because uh, 20 a reading of 20 on the detector is counting the background rate right um, and where we have a reading of 20 without the background rate so obviously you have to add the background rate to get a true measure of how much time the sample took to decay and 25 counts per minute is right here if you tally it if you sort of um, compare the, the the x value of time that's two days so two so a is your answer